Find Metro by T-Mobile. Stay connected to what matters most with the best value in wireless. Hello and welcome back to the CDL Home Series event. I may have been joined by the ever handsome and glorious bearded man, Joe Merck DeLuca. <laughs> and we have, uh, we have a treat, Joe. This is a match that we've really been looking forward to and mostly because of uh, a big change to this Optic Gaming roster. Yeah, uh, JCap is out, right? We we sort of figured he was going to be the one. I mean, listen, overall, the entire team has been underperforming, but they're going to bring in a substitute. They're going to bring in Chino, and he's going to try to do his best. Uh, it's it's not an easy spot. Uh, you know, Dashy is probably going to have to run full-time sub now. But, I mean, Chino is a Call of Duty champion, right? We, we saw in that TK roster in World War II, they were able to go back-to-back. -back. He's been a staple for years to... To come so for chino it's a big weekend for him so i i think we'll agree that from a role standpoint this doesn't really fix anything uh just considering the ars they have on their team but when you think about this squad and what might have been broken internally with the comms with the relationships everything going down could someone like chino who's just kind of a happy-go-lucky incredible personality one of the greatest guys in the industry could he help them improve a ton Absolutely. It's all about the good vibes, man. And uh, I mean, it's sort of what we talked about with JCap. It's not only Chino has to be a superstar. The superstars are on this roster. He just got has to fit in, play his game, play smart, and he can have a major impact. Yeah, well, we'll, we'll see. I, I don't know. I mean, I, I kind of said like what last episode of Hard Points like a week ago that I'd sort of given up on Optic, uh, at least given up on that five-man roster. We expected a change to happen. Here's the change. And now I still think they're probably going to need to make a trade, but I find myself... I find myself rooting for Chino because I want to see him do well Same. with this Optic Gaming roster. But now let's take a look at the game field keys to victory. We're going to look at London. Uh, London, a team that had, what, about two months off, came in, had to play Huntsman, had to play FaZe, looked to see some improvements. But I don't think you were convinced, Joe. You still think they have some a ways to go. Yeah, I think they still have a ways to go before winning. Absolutely. Yeah. Do they have a good shot this week and eat out of this group? I, I think they do. But first things first, they have to improve their S&D, stop relying on sniper picks, and get creative. I really think that's around Wuskin. And then for Optic Gaming, their keys to victory, improve team organization, respawns. It's going to be even tougher to improve that with a new player. Then Chino needs to run as a flex, and that's what he's going to be doing. He's got to slay for the squad. Yeah, and for the, the for the slaying part of it, like, need to slay for the team. I don't, I don't know if it needs to. Kind of your point, what you said, but, like, if TJ gets better as a result of this, if Kitty gets better as a result of this, nah, you don't need a lot out of Chino. You don't. If he can bring the vibes up, get the team more clicking a little bit, then maybe we'll see a lot more from this team. But I think we're about ready to get going, get rocking into this match. Is uh, I know we had some hiccups. Sorry about the issues, some technical problems through the first series, but hopefully we'll get those resolved and we'll get rolling into our second best of five. And uh, yeah, I guess the question mark is it, the improvements we saw last week from London, for London, are they going to continue to get better? And for Optic, how the hell is this new look roster going to be? Yeah, and Maven, I don't know if you heard, but make sure you hit the bracket, Maven. So let's bracket up and let's get into game one. All right, Joe, I've done it. I'm bracketing it up. Okay. The audio is good to go. Map one is underway, and here we go. Optic versus the London Royal Ravens, and uh, I'm not sure what I'm seeing, Joe. Yeah, it looks like kills going down back and forth. Four players for Optic Gaming get taken care of. And, well, Weston's going to put a trophy down and try and get in the hill. Waskin with the angle, trying to make the plays, able to take down two. Joe, when you go to full screen with this, are you having a lot of issues, or is it just me? Uh, yes. Okay. Uh, uh, I am. Okay, so. all right. If you don't go full screen, I think it runs a lot better. Is that why? I just can't see okay. the entire feed is the problem. It's, uh, yeah, I'll keep scrolling up and down. We'll figure <laughs> it out. We'll get through this. That's, yep, that's what I'm doing now currently. But it's a 30-0 to zero start for the London Royal Ravens. Now, can they get the break into the right side? Tires, it's Chino, the new man that'll be trying to lock it down. He's able to take down one, and then Dashy and Slasher off a of spawn will lock it up. Yeah, a great start for the London Royal Ravens. We know that the good side that Optic Gaming are on for hill number two when we rotate to tire shop. You have to have a good start, right? You don't want to see what we just saw between Paris and FaZe where you're down 90 points after two hills. So, I mean, a great job by the London Royal Ravens. Just looking at the scoreboard, Wuskin and Shawnee really had a great start, but now it's Optic Gaming's turn. You're going to have Chino inside the hill. TJ, you wanted him to step up, Maven. Maybe finally this is the weekend. He's on a five spree, a seven and five start for him. Is Optic Gaming locking yeah, this one down? Yeah, I, I gave him a lot of flack. I think the community's given him a lot of flack. 
does he answer now? And I think what's interesting, though, is when he was on the old Optic Gaming roster, when he would play poorly, I think the flak was a lot bigger, right? It was way bigger. Yeah. Optic kind of flown under the radar. You know, it's not the Huntsman, not the biggest team anymore. Maybe TJ wasn't feeling the pressure as bad, but I think it started to culminate a lot this past week. Like, he was really getting called out. Now, how does he answer? Yeah, and I think you said it right. I mean, you have guys like 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 Kenny, like TJ, like Dashy on this squad. You don't really need too much from someone like Chino. As Optic, they will take the 10-second lead. Wuskin now going to get set up. And that was a perfect hold at Tire Shop. That's why we talk about that second hill just being so strong. But now London Royal Ravens, they get set up at Smokestack. You have Scraps on a three spree. Shawnee continues a very strong start. As I, I mean, really, this has just been a back and forth battle. Not a lot of breaks coming through the hills. I am uh, literally scrolling down to see the minimap, Joe, and scrolling up <laughs> to see the score. <laughs> It is, I am uh, also doing the it, same. It's baby. interesting. Yeah. It's interesting. But Scraps, uh, 11 and 6. He was on a four street before he ended up dropping. As they look to lock down Smokestack, that number zero on the map, I believe, is Dashy. That's trying to get an opening towards Top L. He takes down two with the MP5. Gets the angle to maybe pick them out. It's actually Top L. He's in. That's the third that's going to go down. There's the spawn for his teammates. And they'll look to lock down Smokestack, but only 10 seconds remaining on that. But they do get the big flip that they like when you think about the Docs hard point coming in a couple hard points. Yeah, and we saw you see they're running the two AR setup. We knew the ARs were going to be the strengths for this team. So Chino and Slasher with double ARs. But another great hold by the London Royal Ravens. I think we saw Kenny was really struggling. But Chino inside the hard point, not able to find the third kill. But he's going to weaken them up. That's going to make it easy for TJ. Continues around plus five, getting in the hill. And as you said, they are controlling the left side of the map. So we're going to have some big engagements down low. That's Chino. What can he find is what can takes him down the pressure now towards that dock hill like you talked about. And God, TJ has improved, but can Kenny get something going? Yeah, you got to get going. He highlighted yeah. the stats a little bit earlier, but now four and 14. He is sitting around triple negative. Just can't get into a rhythm within this game. But a chance now and, to push I mean, open a lead. Listen, when we saw the maps coming into this one, what, what did you and I talk about? This is sort of the one of the, they have a, a good map set where they can just sort of run and gun. The problem is you can't have a, a slow start from a player like that, but they're still in this game. And overall, throughout this year, Maven, they are 0-4 on this map. So not one of their stronger hard points where the London Royal Ravens are 2-2. Two two. That's true. That's true. But now this dog's hard point that they got set up for almost 60 seconds to go. You can't allow an early break. Now a chance for Kennedy to heat up, takes down one, but can't stand tall for the next fight. They get one person at the hard point from Royal Ravens. I believe that was Jared that found an entry just for a moment. But then there's the clear. Four in a row now for Optic Gaming. Two-point advantage. What can I lead? Can they get behind this? And on the, on the other side of the map, it's Kenny that's kind that's of Kenny. playing. Yeah, I, that number yeah. seven, you saw him pushed out all the way towards kind of London side green. Doing a good job pushing out those spawns and making it. So you didn't even get a second crack at that, really. Like, they weren't even able to get close. Yeah, I mean, they just sort of fly out. And now they're trying to flip the spawns again so they can have that coalition side. Slasher not able to find the second. It was Jerd with the heads up play. But if you talk about this first rotation, a lot of points on the board. For Optic Gaming, I think you controlled the money hills, right? You controlled tire shops. You controlled docks. That's why you have the 40-point lead. But London, they've done a good job staying in this game just by this first hold and that that smokestack they were up to 87 points after three hills so a nice job from london and now they have this set up inside once again they have the set up inside and the spawns for next really a big chance to make a run but this is a big push down from optic they're going to try and find the opening push through the tires both players and kenny and shino are going to get shut down they've done a good job getting into the hard point but is that going to be enough? They're going to need some massive separation. They can get these final 30 seconds. At 30. Then if yeah. you lose all the points in tire shops, it's not that big of a deal. You're looking at around a tie game. But you can't give up this time. And then also the rotation and X is what all six people around the hard point just dropped. Yeah, you, you, you would love this time. The Wuskin, though, up top. Dashy trying to make the play, but he's going to have to basically one versus five. You see the blue arrows spawn up, and yeah, good try, Dashy, but you know we're not playing blitz here. You can't sneak on yeah. through. <laughs> well, yeah, you got to fight the entire team. Oh, uh, yeah, I think a player spawned basically looking at him in that yeah, like bottom right pocket. <laughs> so the opening doesn't come, but you like the, I don't know, the stab at maybe making the play through. But a ton of time now to work on this hard point. Four kills through for the Royal Ravens. Stacked up inside. Dashy again, the lone person here to maybe make the play. And he will fall. 
So if they get the rest of this time, what, you're looking at about a 30 second or so advantage now for the Royal Ravens. Might come down to, to docks again for Optic if they can get those spawns and do an excellent job there. Or maybe this break DJ just turns on scraps. Can they get in at least some contest some time? You still have 20 seconds remaining. And scraps though, he spawns up, takes care of Dashy. So yeah, London Royal Ravens, they take the lead. Wuskin, you know, I, I think, you know, Chicago home series didn't have the the best weekend right that superstar weekend performance that we're we typically see from him look at it right back in the driver's seat 25 and 13 for him is that main ar now will the rest of the team be there with him it seems like it's just been difficult for the entire team to click smokestack a good hard point though for optic gaming right now as Kenny has been bouncing back throughout the course of this map. They're getting the time at Smokestack. They've got two players pushed up all the way into green as well. You've got what? Dashy and Slasher both in a spot there to make the play. But now you have those top left spawns coming in for the London Royal Ravens. This game likely going to be decided when you talk about spawns here in the next 30 or so seconds. Who's able to control that left side? I, I mean, maybe. I mean, if, if either of these teams need the last 20 seconds, you have the potential to win it at office. But more than likely, we will go to yeah. London the, to the How many the games docks. do we see into docks, man? How, how many yeah, games? No, it always feels there? like it's set up for it. As you see, yeah. both teams just fighting over mid-map. This is some solid time. London almost at 200 points but they're fighting for office control and you look at the mini map and they have that office control right now this dylan watching over wuskin now wuskin watching over his team dashy to be the last player left that's all five down for optic gaming la and hey with a good hold here you can close out map number one if you're london no this is like perfect right as the new hard point is popping you have them spawning at the first hard point and you have dockside controlling it doesn't get much better than that for london you nailed it they can close it down here is Optic try to scramble in, but they're still spawning in a very tough spot when you think about the next hard point. Somebody's gonna go have to go huge if they're gonna get a break and a flip here for next. Shawnee now on a five spree. What a map from Shawnee. 33 and 21 as he starts to become an integral part of this Royal Raven squad. I mean, the entire team, right? You have basically everyone positive besides Sherd right now, and he's darn close. I mean, you talk about number six and number seven, Ch Ch Chino and Quavo or Kenny. Ah, uh, not great map for them. And, and again, I think for Chino coming into this map number one, like it's tough, right? To just get right thrown into a match. Uh, maybe expect this from him, but for Kenny to be 18 and 35, double negative on the dot, it just can't happen. This is what we've talked about with this Optic Gaming lineup. It feels like there's always somebody struggling at times. And when you're playing the London Royal Ravens, when the fire power is out there, you have to be able to slay with them. Yeah, and... Kenny hasn't been guilty of that much this year. I know he's had his rough map from time to time, but for the most part, he's played pretty well. I mean, we pointed fingers a whole lot more at yeah, your TJ, your Cap, but Kenny there from start to finish really got smoked. I mean, he's four and 14, couldn't get anything rolling. It's not like he was around the objective struggling either, only nine seconds to go there. Uh, do, you th do you think maybe his struggles have to do with the change though, when you're trying to adapt on the fly, there's some role changes, a new player coming in. <laughs> not not to that extent okay. uh i think if this was a different map maybe but what we talked about with this map set is there's what gunrunner dom gunrunner hardpoint hackney yard hardpoint you're playing a lot of run and gun maps right that don't require the team coordination that azir cave does or saint petrograd if your guns are hot you can win this map and i think or you know win those maps and the match but right now it's the london royal ravens and, and you know and in the driver's seat and i think what you love to see from the royal ravens like yes welcome back to what we saw pretty much from him every single event previously and shawnee mm -hmm. shawnee's the biggest thing for me i, I know they all kind of went off but shawnee's the guy we were a little bit surprised maybe he wasn't in a starting lineup or we thought he would be in one maybe by the end of the year and now he's got his chance despite the rumors that they might be looking at a different player he comes in and this is like I know, I know it was unfortunate circumstances last event with how hard your challenges were. But this is where London's got to pop off. This is their best chance to maybe make a play. We'll now take a look at the scuff play in the game, and it's no other than Shawnee. And Shawnee was going off throughout that map one, but this is a group where I think they need to, right? They need to make a statement.
Yeah, I mean, it's what we talked about. Like, it's really hard because Shawnee's first event, they played Chicago and Atlanta. And there were some really, really close maps. Like, they did play well at the Chicago Home Series. It's just you played two of the best teams in the world. Um, and they just haven't been able to get over that hump. And maybe with more time with Shawnee playing this well, they can get over that hump. But when you, yeah, when you look at the group, you, they can 100% get out of this. But not as much as they can. I think it's they need to. They need the points. They need to, yeah. they need to show that there's team changes work, that they're a team that can can maybe maybe be a contender. But we'll now take a look at the quick scope between the Royal Ravens, between Optic Gaming, sort of where they sit overall in matches. Uh, for the Royal Ravens, yeah, you've been sitting around kind of a 50% map win rate. They've gone to a lot of map fours, a lot of map fives. For Optic, you basically had one good day of Call of Duty. Uh, that's really that's really it. When you think about all the days they've played and all the tournaments we've had so far, they've had one good day of Call of Duty. Yeah, and I think you and I were talking about London and Paris and how close, like similar their recent matches are where they beat the teams that they needed to beat and they've lost to every single good team. Yeah, no, absolutely. Like when you look at it, it's like, yeah, they'll, they'll beat the you know the bottom of the barrel teams and they match up against your Dallas, your your FaZe, your Huntsman, whatever it might be, and that's where they fall a little bit short. Uh, can they get to the point they get over that hump? Well, we'll have to wait and see, but that's kind of what we're looking at. I think for, for Huntsman, for or, sorry, for Subliners, for London Royal Ravens, for both those teams this weekend to see what they're capable of doing. But on your screen now, you can kind of take a look at the overall maps and modes for this series. Is Optic fall short in map one? Yeah, we're going to go to Ramazo Search and Destroy next. We'll have to see what, you know, Optic Gaming plan to do on that map. Um, you know, just taking a look at the, at the records for that one. I do, I do not believe London has played that one. So, London, this is a new Search and Destroy map for them. We're Optic Gaming 1 and 2 on Ramaza. Oh, and I think when you looked at this and we were just chatting earlier, just on the kind of the team speak going back and forth, you said you kind of you kind of like this for Optic, right? Like the overall best of five? Yeah, I did because lots of gun runner in some hackney yard, right? Like obviously searches with a new player, you're going to struggle a little bit. Maybe you can get one out. We know Ramazza, there's a lot of different timings you can hit, some basic strategies to it. Uh, but for the respawns, you talk about hackney and gun runner, compare them to some of the other maps and the team coordination that you need. Those three are a lot simpler, right? Like it's everybody's favorite maps. They like hackney, they like gun runner. You, you, you see those played a lot. So. I just think it made sense where if the superstars played at that level, they could get through this series. All right. Well, they need the superstars to play that level first and foremost, which uh, you did not. Yeah, but that's get the problem. Map yeah, one. they you did not. Did not get that in the map one. Now, can they bounce back and search and destroy? Maybe tie up this series at one apiece. I think when you first saw this series, I was hoping it would be a bit closer. I was hoping Chino could come in and just from a vibe standpoint improve this team, but you were kind of all over London for this one. Yeah. I mean, it just going into a, a match where I think you're playing a sub, you should be able to win the search and destroys. So again, I think Ramaza is one where we've seen a lot of different strategies thrown at it where you, you can play it slow. We've seen some snipers from Pharaoh. We're going to see a sniper from Weskin right away in round one. Over to TJ's POV as he is getting pressured. Because he realized he has one close right underneath of his dashy with the first blood, but... Waskin, I believe, hits a snipe directly after that. Well, TJ's going to get taken down, and now you have a 3v4, but it feels like they know that London has stacked that B side, and this is what we've seen for Ramaza. A lot of the times on defense, as you sort of stack a site, you don't get a free bomb plant, and then you can retake it, and that's what London's probably going to have to do is Optic Gaming's going to move into construction. They're going to clear it out. They're not going to see much. And here's Dylan and Waskin just sort of creeping down through the back. Three versus three. Bomb planted. How will the Royal Ravens look to get this retake? Is Chino just tucked away in a corner? Is Dylan looking for any kind of angle? Dash able to get that first pick. Three versus two now. It all falls to Scraps and Wuskin to look for some kind of opening. You have Wuskin with a sniper still in hand, so not a great gun for an entry. Scraps is going to get caught. Wuskin now by himself in a 1v3 position. 20 seconds to work with. There's the first pick. Puts it into a 1v2. Has now an MP5, which is not enough time, time to work with. Yeah. Not enough time to make the play. Nearly a nice little snap, but it wouldn't have been enough. 
And that was just a good round, especially from Dash here. I think he picks up two to three there, and he's the guy that evens that out to make it a three versus three. London got exactly what they want. They have man advantage when you go into a retake and they lose that. Like, if you're going to play the retake situations, you want at least equal man, but you would love to have the man advantage, and they lose that man advantage to Dashy. And, yeah, when you don't have, you know, the, the trade ability that you typically want on retakes, it's hard to win those rounds. one -oh Optic. They got the first blood in the previous round behind Dashy. It's TJ trying to be Mr. Mid-Map. His bottom rug is the buildup now from the Royal Ravens. TJ looking to wrap back to deal with it. Gets a couple shots in, but now the pressure going to come from lower. Pressure's, yeah. yeah, I think that's just such a fast push from Dylan. Didn't see if he had dead silence popped because I was <laughs> still scrolling up and down. Yep. But this is looking like an A plant and uh, should be an offensive round win for London as they just go fast and that was flawless from the Royal Ravens. A quick, quick round. <laughs> and we're working to get our tech side figured out. Literally, I just got my mouse wheel going up and down to try yeah, and like, see you. Yeah. Where is he? Okay, we'll up get there. down, we'll up get down. There. We'll get there. We'll get there. We'll get there. It's like a little game. We're playing a game within a game, Clint. Yeah, we're yeah, just yeah. challenging it's a little, it's a little you. Mini we're, game. We're, we're challenging you as a caster. Thank you, know? you. Thank you. To show how we versatile, you to keep how versatile we are. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Five and one from Wusk going to kick this off. Dashy leading the way on Optic Gaming at three and two. TJ working with Kennedy to get aggressive up mid map behind the smokes. Pressure. Shawnee, I oh. thought had a win, but I believe it's a drop shot from Shino that's going to get him. TJ then threw him the flank through cafe, gets another kill, and suddenly it's gonna be Wuskin by himself yet again. Man, he's just gonna blow himself up. Yeah. Oh. He, doesn't want the dead he doesn't want the dead silences to, to load up for Optic Gaming. He just wants to get the round over with. Well, that's one way to get the round over with, Joe. To blow Correct. your body to bits with your own frag grenade. Correct, Clint. <laughs> Thank you for all the details. I appreciate that. Yeah, I should write a book, man. I'm I got a got a brain for details you know joe <laughs> absolutely I, yeah you probably could yeah should be an author all right so second round of the board now for optic is everybody now he gets involved on the scoreboard a fast hit towards b this traps is going to get out quickly likely going to catch chino and it'll do just that dashy from top window the person in the best position for the trade but it's Kenny that pushes forward lower and gets caught. On the other side of it, it's TJ through on the flank through bottom cafe. It's able to drop one in ruins. It's just trades back and forth, but ultimately we're left with what? A two versus two with a minute to go on the clock. Bomb. Slasher found an Nancy opening Dillon. as well. I think with, with Daddy, I think Slasher was able to get through. But is it going to work out? It sure no, he's got to finish the first one. It just took a little bit longer. Now a 1v1. Slasher versus Dylan. Dylan has dead silence. Which door is he going to come through? Slasher just trying to figure it out. He knows he has the M4. Dylan still hunting him down. Slasher. The timings are going his way. The timings are going his way right now. But here comes Dylan. Here comes the gunfight. Slasher wins it in a 1v2. I, and I think the timings go his way just enough that Deddy yep. ran out, right? Deddy ran out and finally he was able to get some kind of audio. But... How stressful was that sequence for Slasher? I mean, that had to have been terrifying. Just knowing all the entry points into that building, that Dead Silence has to be up. He was shaking in his boots, but he's able to make the play. Woo! And this is what, I mean, you're seeing these rounds and now they're progressing on Ramaza. And this is one where like for Optic, they're just hitting stuff, right? I mean, hit it. If the round goes your way, great. And I mean, again, they're just playing to that chaotic play style right now. Kenny just inching his way forward. A slow start to this one as well, one and three. Raps be able to hit the stun and the hip fire over the top. Takes TJ and Dashy down. Kenny gets into position. He's at least able to take down Scraps, but you've already yeah, lost Dylan's two players on the optic side. 
Yeah, Dylan's got to be careful, though. He, he's left on an island. Wuskin sniping over him. Not able to watch everything. Just able to get alive. But still, Opti has made this a two versus three. They're right back into the round. It's Chino and Slasher, the father-son duo, as they like to be called. That's right. They go all the way um, back. Was that Noble? Right? Were they teamed Noble. together all those yeah, years ago? Yeah, and Ghost. Where Slasher and got like, his first, what was it, like, second place they got at that event? Second. Yeah. yeah. That's way back. Holy hell. I, like, forgot yeah. about that until you said the father-son thing. Yeah, that's the last time I won, but here we go. <laughs> <laughs> that's a long time ago, oh. I know. Ancient history. Now, starting the plant. Slasher's gonna take one down. Has to get the bomb planted. They know it. Oh, he's able to find another one. Oh the one that's shot. Can he do it again? Oh my God. Can he do it again? <gasps> you better hit the shot, Wuskins! You can't hit the shot! Can't hit the shot. Slasher. Oh my gosh! Already with a 1v2. This guy might get the 1v3 here as well, and he does it! Does it. I don't know who we gun second, but maybe there is a saying in Call of Duty the Clutches. It is always the second person's fault. And right there, it was that person's fault. He got smoked. He got smoked. I'd have to watch the yeah, kill feed. Well, I'm going to be honest with you. With how I have to watch the stream currently, I couldn't see I the know, kill feed. No yeah. <laughs> so I'm not entirely sure who it was, but somebody gets fried and slasher now with a 1v2 and a 1v3 in this game, too. He's seven and two on the map. A bit of brilliance there from Slasher. Woo. <sighs> All right, getting me fired up, baby. I love me some SD clutches. Who's that working the flank? It's TJ going all the way around. Can TJ get there in time? Can he find Dashie a fortunate holds, timing? Dies. Dashie holds. Dashie makes the play. TJ gets one of the flank. TJ should have another gunfight here as well. Going up against the last player in scraps. But at this point, just get back to your teammates. You have a 3v1. The young gods and TJ and Dashie make the play to make this an optic round. They're just making the individual plays. I mean... A 1v2 and 1v3 can scraps be the hero that they need. Or is this going to be a 5-1 lead? Has Dead Silence popped? Doesn't have too much time to work with. Has to get the plant. Slasher, he's got his Dead Silence. He's going to pop it. Go all the way around. Dashy gets heard. One versus one. He's trying to juke him out. Slasher's just going to run away. I like that from Slasher. I think he knows he doesn't have too much time to plant. And that should do it. He's going to hear the nade go off. And Well, it's Slasher who doesn't give up the clutch. It's Slasher who gives the clutch. Sorry, Joe. I'm trying a new link to see if that works for me. And it does not. Okay. All right. Right back to what we were watching. All right, well, Opti, they have just... Well, Slasher, I mean, I, Slasher has just taken over this map. That's that's three rounds he has clutched. Dashy going to get first blooded by a nice nade from Luskin, and Slasher hits the... I don't even know what you call that, that metal beam, and then he almost blows himself up. Trying to find the pick on a Luskin. Luskin's going to get out of dodge and back himself up. As he's going to give his team an advantage. Jared just lying prone, looking for anyone on that mid cross, but it's Kenny with control of Top Cafe. Chino gets tagged up, but stayed up. He's got TJ starting to push over his cross as they look to work the entry into the A site, but Shawnee, third story, who locates another kill number significantly. Now into the favor of Royal Ravens, but Slasher's the last alive, and you never count him out of it. Can he get another? He's on a 1v2, a 1v3, a 1v1 clutch. Can he get the 1v4 clutch? Just he so just little time. just needs silence resets. Yeah, he needs resets right now. Be able to find one. He knows where the second... Oh my gosh. Maven! I don't know if he has time. He's got 10 seconds. Okay, this player's just playing his life. Who is that? That is... A, <laughs> what is here? Somebody kill him! Somebody Chase him around. down! Just run just, away! Yeah, just get off the map! He is invincible! Run to save Petro! Go anywhere but here! 
What, what are we watching? Dude. There is a slasher's map. Dude. This is no longer oh, Ramada. I thought he was going to pull it off. Dude, I thought it was done when I saw the time. It was a 1v3 at 20 yeah. seconds. Like, no way he does it. Imagine if Jur just overstayed his welcome just a bit and Slasher 180 beamed him. Oh. 10 and 2 now. All of his kills basically in the clutch. Now Slash will be the one playing on the offside. Everyone else stacked towards B. Slasher's got his work cut out for him. But if there's one player you don't want to run into, it's this man right now. And he's just trying to stay alive. He knows the push is in. London, they are committed. They're going to get the plant down. Slasher trying to find the first blood, but the staircase player in Dylan going to take him down. He had dead silence pop. Slasher just not ready for it. Oh, Gino. Nice shot. Yeah, rips Wuskin off that piece of cover. And here's this retake. I mean, all on scraps. Talk about teams retaking A. And uh, yeah, it looks like Optic's going to be able to do it all up to scraps now. He's got to get him up bomb. The fuse about to be done. He's able to catch him. Stops the defuse. 15 seconds left to go, but TJ is there for the trade. TJ will get on the bomb, and it is a rare map win now for Optic Gaming. We're able to take the search and destroy and tie our series up at 1 1. I mean, you you take for for the London. That's just a frustrating map for London. I mean, you take the slasher clutches away. This is four four, right? Yeah. We're still yeah. going, but it's not. And he just puts the team on the his back in some important rounds, ties the series up. Just brilliant, brilliant from Slasher. And yes, Slasher was the highlight of it because yeah, he's ten and three. He had a lot of clutch moments. But uh, I, I thought I thought Dashy and TJ were impressive in spots as well. TJ yep. was continuously getting flanks on the defensive side of things when they were getting that push towards A, right? Like he was flanking ruins through cafe, getting picks to soften up the pressure. And then Dashy had his moments too, where he would make a brilliant individual moment to kind of keep them in rounds. But uh, yeah, I mean, the player of the game, the MVP from the map too, is Slasher <laughs> without question. Uh, the guy was ridiculous. Almost pulled off a uh, 1v everything uh, over the course of that game. Yeah, he was doing it all. So, I mean, Optic, now you get to two gun runners, and this is what I was talking about. If if these guys can start to heat up in a gun runner dom, it's a little bit scary for London, but I will say, if they're able to get to that map five, Piccadilly, Search and Destroy, you know, we've seen Weskin Sniper. We've seen his impact. They have more repetitions on it, so you would have to favor London. But we'll see what happens. Still a very close series. Uh, yeah, it's 1-1, one, one, but yeah, we'll see on what Optic can do in those three and four. If you think uh, the map five is very scary for them, even though they just dominated that search and destroy, then maybe they can get it done there. But we did have a tweet from Waskin about poking the bear. Uh, just seeing people praying his downfall, I think we're talking about the last event where he had uh, had some struggles, people probably coming at him a little bit. He's looking to bounce back, Joe. Yeah, and I, I mean, there was just some maps where like as a main AR, it's harder to, to take over, right? But he was playing St. Petrograd, so excited to see him on these maps like Hackney and Gunrunner. It's true. It's Gunrunner, Gunrunner coming up next. Our series all square. Who will take the advantage from the domination? We'll be right back.
the United States Air Force. Learn more at airforce.com. Grubhub. Together, we can save the restaurants we love. PlayStation 4, the official platform partner of the Call of Duty League. Matt cutting down his teammates in mid. It's a one versus two. With Scumpy now with a bomb in hand oh. and not a chance. I'm not even sure if that was a grenade. I think it was the concussion or the flash that killed him. Phil? I don't know that car. I think we're going to see it right here. It was a flash. It was a flash grenade from Mac. Bang, bang. Now into more points. Major Maniac trying to be the route man right now. Yeah. Trying to stay alive. Trying to set up his team for the next hit. Right around plus 10 for Empire at this current moment. But yeah, so much to Major Maniac to try and make a play in the back. Can he get a couple of kills as his teammates rally over and spawn Empire on the opposite side? Yeah, I think it's more can his team get the kills and he stay alive. So there's the first one. Is that going to influence things? Ilian Shotzi, though, they go big. Shotzi is able to find two of his teammates, but Major Maniac finds three. Trying to do what he can in the hill. Takes down Krim as well. Sliding back and forth. What a play for Major Maniac. That could be a, a game-changing one right there. I mean, 100% is. I mean, think about if they don't get this break. Empire running away with this game. But now FaZe are right back into it behind the route, man. This is the reason they put an SMG in his hand and moved Selium over to the AR. They want wanted yeah, Major Maniac play, to right make there. plays just like that, Joe. He is now decapped, 16 seconds on the clock, still a four-point game. Scump now pushing over towards B. That should be neutral. Zuma wins a fight. More chaos ensues. Two-point game. How many ticks are we going to see come through? Well, New York, they don't have a hill. Chicago Huntsman, they've stolen game three right from underneath the New York subliners. 158, 156. Everyone Everyone at the very end of that game from the Chicago Huntsman clutches up big time. There's only 25 seconds now on the clock to work with. Trophy out, Priesta pushing in through dish, might find a fortune in time and he finds just that. His teammate How guns the one this? in the back and now it's just on Temp who is watching mid map. 15 seconds to go. The wall oh, bangs no, through. What is on this? the defuse. Now it's all gonna be on Simp. One versus two, they gotta get it down. Simp trying to track across and get in position to make the play, but there's the plant. It's 1v2 for Simp. It's that 1v1 for Simp. The youngster, the vet, former daddy. teammates. They both have daddy popped. Clay holds it. Clay gets the shots in. Simp gets out the window. He still has time. 30 seconds to work with. Both daddies are out now. Both daddies are out. What are they gonna do? Clay continues to play top. He's gonna hear him. He's got it. He's probably he probably hears him. He goes down the stairs, and I think Clay may have made the play, but Simp gets, gets the kill. He gets the kill. He gets the kill. Wins the one v one. Oh my God! What a map two it was. All right, welcome back to our best of five between Optic Gaming and the Royal Ravens. We're tied up at 1-1 after a sensational, phenomenal, beastly performance by Slasher in the game two. Uh, I still, I guess I feel like the series is still in the control of the Royal Ravens, just considering how the game one respawn went. But man, what a, what a search that was from Slasher and Optic. Yeah, I, I think so, right? I think London was the favorites. You talk about the team change coming into this one. Look at that Dom Gunrunner. London, though, 0-2 on this map. First teams, like, 0-1 versus Paris. We know how good of a team, you know, Paris has been in domination. 0-1 versus Toronto. Maybe we didn't expect that. On the other side for Optic, you know, you're 1-2, or sorry, 1-1 one one on this map. So, uh, maybe a better map for, for Optic Gaming, but still, when you talk about Chino having to come in here and we know how tough domination can be at times, you know, to coordinate that teamwork. Well, we're going to take a look at the U.S. Army tactical play, and of course, it's going to be Slasher. I believe the second player he smoked was a headshot onto Shawnee, so that is who he gunned. We were kind of wondering who it was that got smoked. Shawnee was kind of the <laughs> hero of the Royal Ravens for that map one, but uh, yeah, I think we didn't see it, obviously, how it went down, but he got gunned. <laughs> by Slasher for him to clutch that 1v3. Yeah, I, I imagine he was probably at that wall, right? That half wall to get into the bomb site. He was probably right on it because, I mean, where else would Slasher get that headshot? It looked like he had dead silence pop too. And it's just one of those things too where maybe they just didn't coordinate it right. He's got to wait for his teammate. You never want to challenge one-on-ones, you know, when you have that main advantage. You want to take the one versus two, get the easy trade. Doesn't happen and, well, 
Optic Gaming win the map? They win the map, but they have not won the war. <laughs> I don't know what accent that was, Joe, but I'm excited for the map. I don't know. I, I have no idea. <laughs> Into Gunrunner domination. Seaside spawn for Optic Gaming. Slasher's POV because he was a nut job freak of nature in the map, too. We'll see if he can continue that, trying to help Kenny over mid-map, but it's Dylan immediately through those boxes that puts pressure on to C. Over towards the B side, it was Dashy trying to make a heroic play, I think in kind of a 1v2, 1v3 type scenario, but he drops. Now it's Kenny through events with the support of TJ, looking to find that opening. And you want to see Kenny really step up in map three. He did yeah, not have a great hack in the yard. Hard point around double negative. Slasher watching that overextend towards C. We see this all the time when teams spawn up towards that A side. They try to put pressure at C, right? You can sort of hit it from both ways. But the fight at B should go the way of London as Shawnee goes big, able to take down three. And well, when I say that, Slasher is able to sneak through. Yeah, there's the flank in to get the kill. And then you still have, what, two or three players from Optic Gaming in a position to try and get it done. They're not quite able to get the neutral, and then Wuskin goes huge. She gets three off the of spawn, nearly takes down Shino as well. They're onto the neutral at C as well. I believe that Scraps that was able to push through and deal with that. Optic get B, but it's still a two cap for the Royal Ravens. Yeah, but this is where it gets scary. I mean, you see Wuskin already set up towards A, but look at where the spawn comes in for London. This is not what they can afford this is not what you want whatsoever but Wuskin trying to hang on to a he is trying to hang on to that flag but there comes slasher able to clean him on up now can optic the rest of the members hold on to b kenny he takes down two has the help of chino as well the duo getting it done they're able to find three kills overall which should buy time for the rotation in as dash is able to take care of Jared. is it gonna be enough i thought kenny's two kills would be the hole they needed at B, but the neutral yeah, think, though, comes through. Even if they don't get B, right? You have the A flag. You, you flip the map. I, I think that's sure. already a win. Yep. You'll take that ace out of the map, but now can you get the two cap? Waskin's got the entire Optic Gaming team in front of him. Trying desperately to finesse, but he will get dropped. For now, it's a seven-point advantage for the London Royal Ravens. Look at a lockdown. Both respawns in this series. Let's go to a London Royal Ravens. Listen. One Yeah, yeah, one uh, Mitch 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 I'm gonna be you. And you and you and P3, you and P3. P3 wants you, 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 P3 as we come out of that astro gaming listen it's a 15 big it's 16 point advantage for optic in la you listen to the comps from royal ravens but i think gameplay wise there was more to like from optic 
I, I mean, the, the comms were great from, from London, right? You, you just heard them small talking, which, which, where do we want to go? How do we want to break this? But you can see what happens when you lose the A from talking about. So much pressure on C. They end up flipping the spawns. You have another great half from Slasher. Kenny, Kenny finally steps up, but you saw how difficult it was to break out of that C trap every single time they got to be one player from Optic, whether it be T, would go immediately be pressure on the C fly and they have to back up. It just takes so much time to try and break that setup and they just weren't able to do it. And now the scary part of this is you've got Optic with the lead and, lead and spawning on this A side. How much damage can they do from this position? Or how quickly can the Royal Ravens get the flip? How do they opt to play the break? It's going to be three players right up mid-map in crates. Able to deal with them, I believe, is TJ, who locates, I think, two kills around green. Now, you get some help from Flasher as well, but there's the second now for TJ. B insta-cap for Optic Gaming. They're going to try and track back because there's a big one-on-one -on -one to go down on A. Chino's able to win that as he goes massive, and that's early, early AB control for Optic Gaming. Yeah, I mean, London just goes for it. They sent four right off the start towards A, and they're able to keep them off it. Uh, the, the cap just came in a few sec still. Shawnee and Jurid on that side of the map. Shawnee's trying to go all the way around. The key here is, though, you have too much time doing this, you end up losing just trying to play the clock, right? As uh, they're not getting any kills. Jurid trying to do what he can. Maybe just try to play a little bit of a solo mission. Chino is going to get taken down, but right now he knows he's on this. The flash is going to hit. TJ's going to spawn up, take care of him. And now you're into the same point. You have one player in Dashi inside of bathrooms. So they're going to have to back up, try to defend C, and try to yeah. restart. It's, it's literally what we two minutes. Yeah, they did a good job on both fronts. Good job dealing with stuff at home and then Dashi being the aggressor. Solid stuff from Optic Gaming in this Gunrunner. I think that's part of why you like this map set for them. A Gunrunner. Kind of makes sense to a lot of the top teams. Not not saying that Optic yep. is a top team currently, but they certainly have some top players. <laughs> the lead just like, used to grow, though, man. It's, it's very cool. simple in a way, right? It's, it's much simpler than what we see on, like, a Petra or even sometimes Hackney, you know, in, in terms of team coordination. Well, I, I, think, I think the spawns in this map can get wild, but you mean just, like, overall yeah. layout and positioning, kind of, right? Yeah, exactly, yeah. yes. Because we've seen Petro like make a lot more sense at times in Dom, but yeah, I think this one, from, from a play like style a standpoint, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> nice job there by Kenny. If you wanted him to turn it around, we take a look at the stats next time. I'm curious to see what he's at. He's this double map positive. Okay, right? well, he's 20 hey, yeah, that's 20 20 way better than now, triple right? neg, isn't it, Joe? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, he was double neg in map one. Now it's double positive in map two, or just darn close to it. Is now a 40 point lead with two and a half. Yeah, the flags and a neutral. You have to play perfect. This is when the thing has to step up. But guess what? It's EJ who's already at C flag. And that's all Optic's going to do. For today, put a couple of players towards both flags. As long as they're trading kill ones, they I, will be a okay. Weird question for you that I'm thinking about because this is looking like a blowout, at least right now with two well, minutes left. Okay. Question for you. Dashi, you know, comes on the scene, one of the best ARs in the game, right? You saw him do it with a Maddox. You know he do it with an ICR. We've seen him do it with an M4 here. And Slasher gets a four-piece onto the Royal Ravens and continues his hot stretch. For the longevity of his career, is it maybe a good thing that he's having to run a sub, show his versatility? Is there a way this might improve him as a player in the long run? Yeah, I wouldn't see why not. I don't know. The MP5, though, is yeah. <laughs> different than, like, what we saw last year in the yeah. SOG. Uh... This thing is, it, it can do it all. It, it, to me, it really is. Okay, okay. That's when I thought it made sense for him to just run this MP5. I mean, he can do whatever the, the hell he wants to do. And we're starting to see it. It's just him being comfortable. Like, yeah, does him on an M4, maybe you want to see that a little more often, but I don't know. I just, the, with the talent he has, put him on this thing. I was just trying to think so, of like, uh, yeah, it's, historically, it's like tough. main it's, ARs having to switch to like full-time sub and there weren't like a lot that came to my mind, but I haven't done a lot of research on that exact. To topic. me, this is like a Remington versus, you know, yeah. the same thing as like okay, the that makes sense. That makes sense. Like it's that makes the sense. same yeah, thing. Yeah. 
this go. He was gonna he find the fourth <laughs> big money cheat putting on a show. He had the what the quad from Slasher from Chino. I think he had a triple from Dashy in there as well. As they are lighting it up, the lead over 40 now. Royal Ravens get smoked. And is, does it really kind of come down to that early eight flip, at least in the first half? Is that yeah, big part for of me it? it does. It does. I mean, Optic could have had a great second half, but, you know, if, if London keep what they were doing in the first half, the, you know, the first four minutes, they probably have a, a, a solid lead. The pressure's been a, on the Optic, and who knows what happens at that point. Comes and you just saw the slang. There was so much green in the kill feed. They were dominating it, and I think that stress went to the second side for London. Uh, now things get scary, because where I feel like... If you look at London last tournament, maybe there wasn't the most pressure on them since, you know, you had the two months off and you're playing such a tough group and such tough teams. But now, if you fast forward two weeks to now and you come and you're playing as an optic team who's been horrendous, who are playing with a new player on their lineup, if you come in and drop this series, like, I, don't you feel there's a lot more pressure on London to take this without question? There has to be. Yeah, I, I think the good thing is, though, for them, like, it's not... Up, right? you lose the good thing is this is winners one they, they still have a shot to get hey, this is over teams yet. be able to do it <laughs> yeah it's not a yeah this series is over sure i, I very surprised to see I, I would be surprised to see london lose this with what we saw last week i'm not super surprised because i i guess i've always you know how high i've talked about it and how i thought it had to be a small thing that could turn them around like i'm not shocked but yeah i feel like a majority probably of people thought this was a lock for London, just with the improvements we saw. But now I feel like when you're down to one, one map away from dropping this first series and going into the lower bracket of your group play, I feel like the pressure has to build a bit. As we'll now take a look at the stats, what uh, Dashy plus 11, he's 30 and 19. Slasher goes huge, he's plus 10. Uh, really just kind of a nice all around performance. Kenny at plus eight really rebounds from that uh, that first map where Kenny was obviously struggling a bit. He goes, what, double, triple negative through the first map. Um, but that just felt like a it, it was a tough one for the Royal Ravens. Once they got flipped out, you, know, you guys heard Joe kind of talk about the fact that the comps seemed to be on point. But once they got flipped out, they just couldn't retain control of the two cap setup. It was pretty much optic from there. And then they had nearly a flawless second half. And it started with what? The Royal Ravens trying to push three, four players to get the flip early. They weren't able to do it. Optin get them locked in that kind of AB vice early and just kind of never look back. Just a great piece of Dom from them. And I guess we kind of thought on Gunrunner that might be the case. Now the frightening part for London is we're going to stay on Gunrunner. We'll see if they can continue to look good on this particular map for Optic. But we'll remind you kind of how the schedule is going to go today. We already had FaZe versus Legion. Phase were able to take that in 3-1 fashion. Now Optic up 2-1 in our next series. Coming up after that, we are going to have subliners going up against Ultra. And then to close out the night, I think one that people are really excited for is four Rocker Mutineers. Because Ro Rocker Mutineers, you know, we had uh, the one that's going to be your game field marquee match for Rocker versus Mutineers. But then they were sort of widely debated as like, who's the... Who's the number four, right? Between those two squads. And now with the Huntsman struggles, it's like, do they bump up even more? There's been so much discussion around those two squads. And it it feels like, I guess for me, everyone's sort of started to be a believer in the Minnesota Rocker. They've come around. But for the Mutineers, it seems like there's still some doubt there. Even though they've been to a final twice, they've gotten a win. It seems like a lot of people still have question marks. And maybe that's because... For most of the players in that lineup, you haven't seen consistent dominance or players that have been in the top for a long time. But I I'm really, really excited for that matchup because I have no idea who's going to win that. Rocker Mutineer should be an absolute blast. But as we take a look at the, the player cams in our current matchup, and you guys are just listening to me currently as I take you through this wondrous road of the CDL. I think Joe's getting some, uh, some issues resolved on his side, so you guys can spend this glorious amount of time with me. I'm just curious to hear how impressed you guys are with Chino so far. I mean, this has got to be a a tough spot because this is Chino is like not. If there are a lot of subs this year, or or you think about players not in the league that maybe you would expect to be, whether it's a I don't know a fellow or a Naga fan or a general or like players that players that aren't starting like Chino. 
Chino's won tournaments, man, like recently. Like he has been a top player on a top team and it's gotta be tough for him to, I know I mean, he's probably doing well from a contract side, but to not be involved in the action's gotta be difficult. And now this is maybe uh, maybe a shot, but we'll take a look at the overall top five KD and Hardpoint and Waskin. This is entering Florida. Waskin is at the top, even above Octane, who has had some insane maps. Waskin is at a 1.38. And I know he took some flack. He was hard on himself uh, maybe after the last event, how that went down for him with Chicago. But this is another test, maybe more of a test than a lot of people thought it was going to be. What can he do against Ch uh, against Chino and TJ on this opti Optic Gaming lineup? Now Slasher going to be his big rival here at the Man AR. And I think we all agree Slasher has had uh, the most to say so far in this series, especially when you take a look at that game two, Search and Destroy. But we're just getting ready to to hop into the hard point as uh, as soon as we can get rolling on with this series and continue through our final two matches of the night. I just love seeing. I mean, I can't be the only one that just wants to see Chino succeed. Like Chino, he is. If you guys are new to Call of Duty or haven't followed it, like he is like literally the most lovable guy. And he has been in some spots, some really difficult spots in the history of his career where like financially he wasn't able to make it to an event, like an important event, like the community helped him out. He's had big streams to like get him through stuff. And he's just had some tough spots. And I, I just, I know this roster doesn't make a lot of sense from a role standpoint. I know it doesn't make a ton of sense, but like I desperately almost want it to work and Optic not need to make a, not need to make a trade, not need to make a deal. We'll see if, uh, we'll see if they'll be able to do it. But it looks like Gunrunner now ready to, ready to load on up. We'll hop right into our map for his optic. Look to close this series out. Can they do it here? Or do we get to a map five? I believe map five is Piccadilly, and Joe kind of highlighted his concerns around Waskin with the sniper and not having been played a ton for optic gaming. This map four could prove crucial as we will get right into this fourth map. We're going to kick it off with Slasher's POV. He's been so good throughout the course of this series. Hey, Maven. How you back, buddy? I, I don't know. I, I don't even know I what's wrong with my I hear you. I have no idea. I just randomly I, heard I, they, they were testing They just told me to stuff. stop talking. Uh, then I'm they a, started told me to start talking. So here I'm back. I'll be honest, Joe. I just blacked out for five minutes. I could not tell you one <laughs> you thing. Good. I could tell you one thing I talked about for those five minutes, but I missed you terribly. You talked about how great of a person Chino was. I love him, man. Just I love my him. issues about, you know, London in, in this map. So you, you did good, kid. Thanks, you know? buddy. Thanks, Th buddy. There's a reason that you're, you know, esports. What, what is it? What's the award? I don't yeah, know. Some more award. You're the best. Broadcaster of the year, Joe. That's, that's what it's Correct. called. Yeah, yeah, right. You're you're an absolute unit. You're an absolute unit. So. I was thinking, Joe, I might just hold it in my arms throughout this entire cast. I'm, yeah, I'm gonna do. Go I'm for gonna, it. I'm gonna hold the trophy like a little baby. No, I'm just kidding. That's that's fine. But uh, you know, London a good start. But the problem is, number six Chino goes all the way around. He's trying to make the play. Is the the great observing team is able to catch it? He's got to find a killer too, though. He is all by himself. I would imagine London has to know that something is up. Where is Chino? You haven't seen him in the kill feed in a while. Boom. We found him. You take care of business. And now it is a race across to this I, hill. I think London's spawning out. At least one of them did. That number two and yeah. Johnny did spawn the out. parallel spawns right now, yeah. So they'll still be close. I thought they might spawn out a little bit deeper if it was dash. He could get to the back a bit quicker. But now these parallel spawns which is honestly i think the first step you need to get done if you're optic anyway so it's done as yeah, soon as the hard jump. point pops now they can just and, flood, and that's flood, the plays flood. that like you, you look at chino and you say you know that's you know good job right that's what you're on this roster for uh as he was able to sneak all the way around be that route man and gets his team in a position now to earn a good set of time here at depot oh, this is bad been great from Optic, even if they don't get a ton of time and they're still looking at a deficit. The scoreline could be a lot more brutal, but now the rotation in from London. That means the final 15 to 20 seconds will go to Optic. The forward man will be, I think, TJ, who is going to get caught in a position trying to rally across the minecarts, but you still have two players just flooding through bathroom. They just go soaring on in. The trades go the way of London, though, as they have an extra man mid. But as I say that in Jern Falls, a follow-up now there from Optic. So we'll get forward, but we'll get the scraps POV as he's locking down this power position in minecarts. 
And you saw Slasher's position in the forest. What he's trying to do is just get set up with the M4 and he can just watch the cross to the hill. If someone gets pushed up, he's putting shots and he is helping his team in. He is locking them in the back as well, but it's up to them to win the fights on the hill and they are just not doing it. Slasher's doing his job. He needs his teammates to do theirs. Now Slasher's gonna get taken down and this has been a great hold at minecart for the London Royal Ravens. Up 30 now. 15 to go. Optical give this up. Well, not by choice, but <laughs> just dominant position from the Royal Ravens. Dylan looking at finesse, but he's not able to do it. It's two kills through for Cheeto on Optic as well. Inside the hard point goes Optic. But they've got to look to get this time and also work the flip. I think it's Dashy kind of lurking towards Ben's side. Like I think he is though. Shot. Compared to like the depot, that second hill, I feel like teams have really figured out this warehouse hill and how to break it, you know? So I feel like, I don't know if it's as like, it can be as good as a money hill as, you know, we, we've seen like with depot, but I think teams have really started to figure out because the spawns are a little bit easier to influence than what we see on depot, uh, that teams can put a lot more pressure on crates and maybe not fight for those spawns as much as they used to. Oh, good London though, Joe. Get a massive hold here yet again. They were strong in micro where they got the early setup. Chance to do it here. If they get this locked out, what? They're already up about 20 points. This could be a massive lead if they can do a great job here at Warehouse. All the pressure to Optic to try and get the push through and get the break. Shawnee, little shaky shots. That's going to allow TJ to push up. The smoke goes down. There goes, you know, Dashy. Chino Slasher, the whole team is here. Can London hold Ooh. on? It's a big two-piece by Jerd. It's a big two-piece by Dylan to get this time. A little bunny hop around the edge. To <laughs> shut down that push from Optic. Now they do it with close still spot, at least in my on cart. A, he's on a force break. <laughs> he's just trying to finesse as long as he can, trying to get the contest. They look to follow it up. It's a double nade, I believe, from Straps and maybe his brother that Gets the kill towards that front door warehouse. The lead continues to roll for the Royal Ravens. And what? It was, uh, well, I think Chino had a rough map. Well, the, the hard points have not been good for Chino. Whereas maybe the search and the, the Dom, he was comfortable. The, the hard points for the most well, part and, have not and been I great. I think it's just, I would imagine it, like, you're out of pro play for a while. I mean, you can even play tens. I don't think it matters. I don't, I don't think it really gets you into the pace of what hard point can really be an organized team like it, it, sometimes it just feels so fast as dylan is on a 10 spree finally gets shut down and that's probably what he's feeling right now it, it's stressful just to just to come in after a, a, you know a months of hiatus to play against one of the best teams in the world it's got to be difficult especially when dylan is going on 10 sprees like that maybe the beast is finally awoken if he can stream together a couple good events i know it's not quite the numbers we saw last year but if Dylan can get even back to close to the form he had last year, how massive that would it be would great be. for London. <laughs> yeah, yeah. great for London and horrible for everybody else in the league. Yeah. What a chance for Optic to get back into it. We're going to rotate the depot. They have the spawns. Five seconds until this pops. They need this to be a good hold. This could be the game right here. Yeah, I was actually about to ask you, is it is the whole game... Right yeah. on a hold you here need from about 40 here. I think you would love 40 here. See what it turns into. Yeah, but you need like 40. And Royal Raven's not getting the other 20. Yeah. Otherwise, you don't yes. chip away at this lead much. You, you would like to be around like 120. You'd yeah. be, be down 20 points. Yep, yep. Can they get to that spot? There's already a contest in. That might be the break. Yeah. Four going to drop for Optic. They've already gotten in. There's the flip. There's the spawn out. It's too quick. It's too clean from the Royal Ravens. And that's the break that might end this map. And while they, uh, another stronghold as everybody gets involved. And now with 18 seconds See. left, Optic Gaming's like, we got to rotate on over it towards that minecart. It scraps. It's his turn to heat up. We saw it a few weekends ago in the Chicago home series where he was really taking over in some hardpoint maps. And now it feels like he's here too. That break wasn't even like... It wasn't even a break that led to parallel spawns. It was just a break and a spawn out and yeah, it's our hard point now. Yeah, like, they all died. Yeah. Uh, 
There's no trades. It was just too too much blue. Too much blue. Seventy point deficit. As we go to minecart, Johnny comes soaring in. They want to get a quick break yet again. The number's still here to rally, but through on the flank is going to be Jared. Jared, a chance to disrupt everything that Optic Gaming has going. He's able to cut down the reinforcements. They get in. Optic just getting outplayed, outsmarted, smoked on this gunrunner. It's not done yet, but it's damn close. Yeah, just a few key hills that just didn't go their way. I, you know, you look at the minecart where they could have break. That's in the first rotation, second hill that we just watched. Still, though, they're, all, they're down 90. There's always a chance. You never know. And the, the slang differential is like five or something in that ballpark. Like, it's not really that crazy. Maybe a little bit over that. Maybe a little closer to 10, but it's like a 100-point game. And that's what those quick breaks will do, right? Like, <laughs> yep. there's no stat to represent that really on the kill feed. Like, they just break in, swarm. Oh, I will say, though, this second half of the game, though, ever since the, the last hill on the first rotation at the warehouse, it, it has just been London taking over in the kill feed. Well, that's, like, why I thought it was going to be a little bit more lopsided from a kill standpoint, but it was closer than I expected. Mm-hmm. But yes, growing moment by moment, I think, to your point, <laughs> is uh, definitely the case. Not well, enough optical here. send it to another hill. At least get it to one more, but... Just simply too much work to do is TJ. Another kind of four-piece in the kill feed. Five in a row for him. Likely too little too late, unless they get a flawless hold here, then suddenly you're down approximately 30 points and maybe you can make some heroics happen. We haven't really seen comebacks this magnitude at all this year, just based on the spawning in the title, but maybe they can do it as the guns start to heat up. But already with a foot into the hard point goes the Royal Ravens. They've got the numbers here to make the play, but TJ, the difference maker almost again. That's three for TJ to keep them alive in this game. He has to get those Nine kills. Spree. This is done. Nine spree for him. He already had a 10 spree from Dylan. TJ now into the double digit spree as well. What a comeback this would be if somehow they pull it off. Spots the foot, can't quite get the snap. And they've got to try and surge for this to try and keep them out from getting these final 10 or so points. It looks like Royal Ravens are going to get it. And now from this point on, you have to be perfect at the central hard point. Somehow hold spawns the next and lock it down <laughs> inside a depot. Well, well there's, there's the perfect. They get all five kills, but London's still spawning where they want to for the next hill. And you, you talked about it. It's just so hard when you get to this one to, to get some points, to keep them off it, to fight for map control, to fight for spawns. There's just so many things that you have to do that is hard to do for 60 to 90 seconds. As London only needs four more. They're getting in the hill. Chino trying to do what he can, but that should do it. And you look at about a 65 point difference. And I think we know where that 65 point difference comes into play. You talk about minecart first rotation. Uh, yeah, that break the second rotation into depot, that second hill. That's it's the difference. I mean, that's it. It's a 60, it's 65 seconds. Yeah. yeah. And some people like you just don't always think about it in the, the nature of a swing, right? Like you think, oh, they got 40 points. But yeah, it's 40 points optics should have got. So it's actually 80 yep. points, right? Like it's, it's, yeah. it's so many point, more points that it looks like when you just think about the time of the actual hard point. That break was so big for London. Uh, Dylan does a great job. I mean, Dylan, what? He is up dropping 37 over a minute in the hard point as well. He leads the way in the slaying department. His MP5 look hot. He had the big 10 spree through there. Dylan seems to be getting back to what we expect from Dylan. Yeah, we're starting to see him heat up a little bit, man. And I mean, Shawnee has another big map. We saw him in the first one, you know, play really well on hacking. I mean, everybody contributed from the London side. Uh, on the other side, there was just, I, I mean, again, I think you sort of hit it. Like the slang wasn't that lopsided. There was just a few opportunities where you know, London took advantage of it. A, a couple of key mistakes and you know, optics, they're just gonna have to go back, watch no, that and fix it. I think they were darn close to even really in the slaying column. I didn't do the exact yeah. math, but it, it was not far off at all. Uh, it got skewed a little bit, maybe because TJ kind of went off towards the tail end of that game, which yeah, definitely shifted things a bit, but <laughs> The map five, 
is going to be Piccadilly. It all comes down to this. Optic Gaming versus the Royal Ravens. Don't go anywhere. We will be right back after this quick break. Want to play Search and Destroy like a pro? Here's some S&D Recon from the U.S. Air Force. Piccadilly is a unique map. There's a lot of building cover around the perimeter, but most of the action happens in the wide open streets. There are a bunch of scattered vehicles you can use as cover, but be careful. Some might just explode. This map's long sightlines and environmental hazards make long-range weapons and explosives especially deadly. So grab a sniper rifle and a grenade because we're going for first blood. If you're on offense, pull out a sniper rifle and run straight for the scaffolding. This is a great vantage point to catch any members of the defense crossing the bomb site A or B. Let's see how a pro like Simp does it. If you're not quite savvy with the scope, run straight out of spawn towards this street light with the frag grenade. Line up these two posts Run, jump, and throw. If you manage to land your grenade near this Jeep, you'll be able to catch anyone on the defense hanging back with snipers of their own. If you're on defense, check out how GodRx works the sniper on B. As soon as he spawns, he runs straight into the bookstore to catch any players making a quick break for bombsite B. From here, he can even catch any enemy sniper's position on the scaffolding. If any players make it all the way to the ambulance, you can toss a frag grenade right at it and blow up anyone lurking behind cover. If you want to catch them crossing to A, give this a shot. Run out of spawn, look to the right, and aim towards this building. This is a common path to get to A, so the enemy might drop a smoke grenade for cover. But if you can predict the enemy's timing like Weskin can, you might just get lucky and find a pick anyway. There's your S&D recon for Piccadilly. Good luck out there.
Well, that was an all new look at s d Recon presented by the U.S. Air Force uh, all season long. The U.S. Air Force is going to bring you intel on s d maps, new ways to play it, new crosses. Because I know, uh, especially with 5v5 and, and all the different angles, all the different players, all the different maps, uh, it can be tough to probably digest. This is a way to kind of break it down, simplify it, show you some key points on the map, and hopefully for you at home, maybe help improve your search and destroy. Yeah, it's awesome, man. And I think for a lot, like, it's it's hard to, you know, watch pros' point of view online, right, and just sort of learn from it. And this this sort of gives you a little little bit more information around it uh, because it's one of those things that obviously pro teams are trying to hide from their other, their opponents. So <laughs> this definitely helps that out. Uh, here we go. To pick it, you just saw an s and recon. The fabulous intel on this particular map of mode. Now we'll see if uh, some of these teams will put it to use. Uh, it's fun also. I mean, those are some great tips over the course of the year. We obviously see teams and strategies evolve, especially in Search and Destroy. But this one, what was your main key reason for feeling good about I mean, the London Royal Ravens this map? We've seen London and and Snipe just stay over. They're 2-1 overall. Uh, they've played this a few more times for Optic Gaming LA. They're 0-1 versus Chicago. So I, I don't even... That was what? Minnesota weekend? So they haven't played this map in an official match in a very long time. You know, you mentioned the sniping of Wuskin, but you also have... That's true. Lord Dashy, who we know can hit a snipe. One of the more prolific snipers in the game. Do a 4v4 quickly, but now TJ able to put the numbers in their side. Think he got the information that there's more pushing as well so he'll clear them off that a side for now just saw the head able to re-snap <laughs> tj making the plays from the top window yeah and a lot of the times when we watch this match between these pro teams it's who can steal that offense right clint like yeah who, who can steal one of the offensive rounds give them the advantage and right now jerds in a 1v3 doesn't have dead silence quite yet has a snipe has an mp5 looking like your uh war zone Load out right here, Clint. Ooh, and I am nasty. I mean, he's hitting it. Oh, that, <laughs> yeah. actually, that looks just like me with the sniper. Is uh, <laughs> the snap not quite on? But let's really track that then. Let's kind of track the offensive round wins, the first bloods. What Dashy got the first blood in this one. So one to Optic Gaming. And this looks to be an offensive round win. Is Jerry just getting toyed with now? Chino will end up falling, but there's Dashy with the trade. He gets the opening bullet to give them the advantage and ends the round with the sniper as well. Yeah, I mean, Chino was doing such a good job for such a long time, right? Just, just sort of messing with that or with Jerd, allowing his teammates to rotate over, able to find that. But yeah, I mean, you saw what London was doing. They were trying to get very aggressive towards the A side, use some smokes, Dylan in the buses, just trying to cause chaos. But it's really difficult to cause chaos in that round one when you don't have dead silence, right? It's hard to find maybe a, a bit of a sneak through. TJ goes big, able to find a multi kill that gives them that round number one. This time it's Wuskin with the first blood. And they add on to that as well as the brother duo. Lock down the snipe angle, lock down the mid boss. 5-3 advantage early in this round and feels like it's over before it starts. How are you supposed to pull off this offensive round one without in a 3v5? And the only times we've seen it is some wild clutch. Like think some crazy 1v3, well, 2v4. TJ, TJ's gotten through. I don't think TJ, they spotted TJ. Oh, oh well. No. <laughs> That well, Slasher gets the kill, but they don't communicate well enough. I think they were just trying to line up nades. They knew he was in that spot. Shawnee does get taken down, but yeah, yeah your opportunity. Slasher's just shooting his teammates. Yeah, maybe oh, uh, he's just, twisted. Just, Did you see that game everything. too? Yeah, yeah he's, he's. I mean, I get it. I he sees movement, man. He's shooting. Oh, yeah, they didn't know TJ's position, but Slasher's grenade did. Under 30 seconds to go. It's all on Dashy now in a one versus four. Ooh, a little jump snipe over the top of the site. One, one. Both teams take their defense so far. That yeah, was two, two snipe kills from, from Dashy, followed up by two from Waskin. And those are the two players we talked about in their snipes and what they're able to do on a map like Piccadilly. Somebody will get that opening in offensive round, but who's leading the way right now? Weston three and one, TJ three and one for Optic. It's a push right up mid map. 
Dylan and Jared are going to find an opening. Find an opening. Can they yeah. find the kills? There's the first that will go through. An insta trade in from Optic, but Dylan will take down another as two got through. And that's what you need. An opening instantly on to B. Numbers in your favor. This could be the first offensive round win as long as Royal Ravens can close it out. Yeah, I, I mean, the timing works out where Dashie's down the underground and a snipe goes off and they just fly at him. So some unfortunate timing from him, but you see they open the map ooh, wide. Ooh, open ooh. Wuskin with a nice snipe and there's that offensive win we were talking about. Let's see it one more time. Little quick side. Okay, did not look like he was even aimed in his vicinity, at least, <laughs> at least through the final kill cam, but he hits the shot. A lovely bit of sniping there from Waskin. Dashy yeah, tries to go for it on the cross, but the smoke is out. They're able to get through. Every angle he peeks, there's a smoke. They're trying to take him out of the game, but there, similar to what we saw in the last round from London, it's opening kills from the offense. Yeah, now you can just slow it down if you want to, but Dylan actually tries to get aggressive on his side. So 3v2 is showing he's able to take down Slasher, but you still have the man advantage. You have the positioning at the site. They're getting the bomb down towards A. Dash, he's watching across. Shawnee runs right into it. Hello, and a couple of just early round picks from both teams where, you know, it, I think this run it was Slasher and then Kenny middle buses as well. Yes. Similar to what we saw London Ooh. able to do in that. Well, they ended the same way. <laughs> oh, yeah, it was Wuskin on one end. It's uh, Dashy on this end. Think about it. What? Each team's won on offense. Each team's won on defense. And they're tied 2-2 in first bloods. And yep. both their snipers going off. Yeah, that goes through a couple of poles as well in the scaffolding. I don't know the amount of it hits you in the face. Yeah, that's, that's true. <laughs> but pretty, uh, pretty identical, yeah, from how this is breaking down thus far. I mean, it's just, and where did those two kills come from for Opti? It was mid buses. Where did they come from for London? It was around the mid bus area. We'll stick with Dashy because he's been hitting the snipes. They're trying to move up mid bus again. This time it looks like they're sending. Okay, so it's going to be two again, just different players. This time it'll be Scraps and Dylan instead of Dylan and Jerry. They'll get backed up nearly instantly, but they will catch Kenny with a stun. Yeah, Ken's got to be careful here. Nice shots. At number eight and TJ, he was really great from that top window until he got sniped what in round one. Here an opportunity to make the play again is everybody kind of underneath him towards that A site. Bomb down. Right outside the site. And well, TJ's just gonna peek the bomb, right? He's just gonna keep shouldering it. Scraps maybe trying to make it play middle buses. Might be the playmaker, but even then, I mean, he's still got so many Optic Gaming members looking at him, but he does find the opening. Dash is going to take him down. He's going to force the 3v3. Just not a lot of time, though. How do they work this bomb? How do they deal with TJ? Kenny inside of buses. Not able to win the duel. It is Scraps taking over. Can they plant the bomb? No, they cannot. TJ. Oh, wait, they get it down. He didn't get the bomb carrier, but Chino goes on the flank. He goes through the pillars, and TJ, I think he spotted Shawnee. He does. They're able to retake it. Yeah, it felt like TJ would have to be the playmaker there the entire time, being the top window guy looking over A, but nice collapse there from Chino as they will close it out and take the 3-2 edge. And this has been, uh, it feels like far more a team effort, whereas Slasher kind of had to take over, obviously, and have all the crazy clutches on that Ramaza. Yeah, it's hard. It's hard to do on this map. Yeah, right? I Ramazza, think we've had a lot of takeover. Away, you can hit some time. Yeah, you yeah. can hit some timings, make some plays around the bomb sites. Well, this we've one seen, not so much. We've seen some big maps here behind snipers hitting shots, but yeah, I feel like a lot of like the 15 kill games, the 14 kill games, like the big games, a lot of them are Ramaza. Yeah. Yeah, you can turn into a one-man army on that map. Just do yeah. whatever you want. Yeah. This time okay. it hits. Smoke out won't save you this time, Dirty Poo. Dashy. Hits another snipe. I think that's like his fifth in this map. As he looks for another cheeky angle on Piccadilly. Yeah, he's able to find it, man. The sniper is on point for Dashy. I now missed a this. Five versus I missed two. this. Hi, Scraps. Oh, just keep going. Oh, okay. Shani, just sorry, off, that's baby. Shani. 
He's got oh. three in this round. Dashy. Sniper just taking over another offensive round one in a 4-2 edge. I feel like we just haven't seen a lot of that this year because optics been so bad. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we haven't. It may be the map. I mean, again, they've only played this once. So this is, again, what well, you might see a little sniper ash on our claw. And, you know, Dashy could snipe on that map. But you can't make the individual impact that you can on Piccadilly. Yeah. Having only played it once and back in Minnesota, obviously not a whole lot of uh, research London could do to prepare for this. Dash you a chance again. I don't know if you want to try. Don't try it. Shawnee's brain splatter to the wind as Dashy hits another snipe in this game five. With Slasher in game two, it's Dashy in game five. TJ right behind him, though, 7-2. and two. Can't discredit that, but I will say, you have map positioning towards the B site for you, London. You know, this reminds you me of... You saw the adjustment they made, right, where they just sort of backed up. They gave up mid-buses, and what happens? You're still able to find a timing inside a bookstore. This reminds me of Optica what does this last year. You? Optica last year. TJ and Dashy joined to fix one thing, and they dominated Search and Destroy. This map, they are the dynamic duo for sure, Joe. They are, but... <laughs> London, still alive. Kenny, made it a little bit easier. It's him and TJ starting to work. TJ's going to pop dead silence. Kenny, I thought he spotted him. Now he definitely does. Do they have enough time? No, that's the question. The challenge is in, but Jurd stays alive. And, well, yeah, deal with that. Yeah, never mind. This, this That's done. He's just going to hop it. Waskin just has to hit one shot, and it's an easy <laughs> one. It's an easy one. Waskin. Good position, closes out the round with a sniper. London now just one back. Big round for London. Just pushing desperately to tie this up at 4-4. And they've got defense on their side. I feel like they have to win this defense. With how this map plays, they need to win this defense. Well, I mean, you can't... I don't think you can expect to win Piccadilly losing three defensive rounds. And that's sure. what would it, this would be. Yeah. yeah. Optic have done a good job on offenses, but how long Ooh. can they do it for? <laughs> As uh, Dylan hits a nade, Weskin with a snipe. There have been some great snipes out of Wuskin and Dashy this game. Oh, you gotta stay back there. That is just, that's a scary position. I'm not moving. I'm staying on my belly. I think, I think that's what Shawnee's been doing every defense in yeah. that spot. Yeah. <laughs> he's got a trophy now, too. Yeah, he's, he's half man, half asphalt at this point. <laughs> <laughs> You know, Dashie's feeling himself, just bunny hopping with a snipe out around the corner. He sees his go, but he knows he's there. Yeah. Dylan will take out TJ. It's all to Dashie now. He's able to track down an M4. There's the shot from Waskin. Another snipe. This uh, this goes the whole way. This might be the most snipes ever hit to Piccadilly when you add up both teams. I mean, we just talk about talented snipers. These are two of the best. Going at it. I love it. Four four as London go back to offense. Defense solid for the most part. So far for Optic. Let's take a look at their stack. But kind of two A, two B, one watching the mid lane to buses. Kind of seven and nine will be dealing with that. Kenny and Slasher. They yeah, just push through this. Been doing. Yep. But the, look at what Optic's doing this time. This time they are like tripling up bookstore. But Jur gets in again. Able to take down Dash. He was in with a first blood. Wow. Was with another one. Just snipe after snipe after snipe. Waskin will hit Dylan then with the snap. And Chino, welcome to the CDL. And a 1v4 with Bomb already down. 
Royal Ravens and put them in a position to close out this map. There's the fifth round of the board. It four to two. That's three rounds in a row. And I, I mean, optics, like they've tried adjusting, but I feel like what we see a lot of times when teams get aggressive, middle of the buses, usually one, you know, nades fly in. And it's, there, there's not a lot of places to go on this map and hide from the nades. And like they're backing up and they're playing a little bit soft and you would think they would probably be trying to coordinate nades, but it's just not happening for optic gaming. They're not finding the first blood. Jert has continuously stolen their books from their store, and that's given them three rounds in a row. He's a book thief. Like yep. Fahrenheit 151. Oh, that's when they burn books. Never mind. It's a completely different story than book thievery. <laughs> Royal Ravens. Look to close it out here. Slasher, though, with another first blood within this game. They can win this offense to get them to the all-important round 11. Top window will be Jerd. Just like we've seen TJ do time and time again, he's going to be the one that has to make the play. The difference here, he's got an MP MP5 versus an M4. Scraps now through the smoke. Is he going to get spot? Slasher saw him. Slasher saw him, and there's another kill, but it's Waskin that tries to bring the odds back to the Royal Ravens. Yeah, and with the smoke, they didn't go for the bomb plant. They actually went for position. Kenny in... And TJ just moved up. So, Bomb does finally go down. Now it's a two versus one. All up to Shawnee. They know his position. They're going to reposition I thought, up top. I thought Slasher dropping there was going to cost him. But I think it was Kenny was able to get the trade quickly. Or if I yeah, they had quickly. such position. They had yeah. such a position so far up the map. Shawnee does gun one. He has time to work with. But how do you attack this? You know where Kenny's probably playing. Can he get the defuse off? Kenny's just going to peek. Oh, he gets in. smoked! Oh, he gets Shawnee smoked! Wins. He wins it! Shawnee wins the game five with the 1v2 clutch. The beams oh, no. on to Kenny in another painful loss for Optic Gaming. But a big win on the board as my backdrop just fell over, John. Okay, well, you get that situated as... I don't know. That is just... Uh, you do all the hard, hard, hard things, right? Like... All the tough things to get in that situation, and Kenny, that is not what you want to happen. I looked at my OBS, and I saw Kat and her sister in the kitchen through my webcam, and I was like, that's a uh, problem. Yeah, that's a problem. It's like, what happened? I'm like, oh, my whole backdrop fell over. I don't even know how that happened. It was, dude, Shawnee's play was so clutch. The the, the clutch and just the play knocked over my whole backdrop. But no, that was, that was nasty. That was some clean shots. It was a tough gunfight in the first gunfight. Then you just smoke Kenny. As I thought Kenny was just going to kind of shoulder it and check it, but he sort of, you know, wide peaks and challenges it, maybe thinking he has time to go prone or stay up, and he just gets smoked by the M4. Yeah, it's just one of those things. I don't know. Yeah, you shoulder, shoot, maybe just try to bait a shot out, then maybe peek it. I I'm sure that is one of those 1v1s he's probably been in so many different so many different times and just did what he did. That player doesn't hit the shot, but Shawnee that time able to connect and... That is a rough loss for Optic because I thought they did a lot of a lot of the hard parts, right? Like winning Dom and S and D versus with a sub. It's pretty difficult to do, but when you look at the hard points, it was just London all the way. They were just a little bit crisper. Well, Joe, as we transition out of this series, uh, one thing I do want to talk about, it's going to be something cool going on the rest of the year, the uh, rest of the season. The U.S. Air Force is inviting people to go head-to-head -head in game battles to compete in 2v2 gunfight tournaments. So, Joe, I know we played a lot of gunfight to start the year. Incredible yep. mode, the 2v2, it, it is awesome. And it's going to be, I believe, every Wednesday following a home series event. So this coming Wednesday, you and a friend are able to compete for your chance to win $1,000. So CDL is going to be putting up $1,000 every Wednesday bucks. following a home series event. 2v2. Can we play that? Uh, Joe, probably not because you are better than 99.9% .9 of all players on this planet, Joe. Yeah, but it's a 2v2 and I got to play with you. So. Yeah, no, that's right. That's right. That, it, it probably yeah, would balance out to be a very average team when you think about it. <sighs> no. it Wait, was, I didn't even realize I just we... just want to do it for fun. I didn't realize we actually already had one at the last event. I thought this was like starting fresh this week, but it looks like we already had one on April oh. 29th. The next one's going to be... Uh, Wait, the next one will be May 6th? May 6th is in the past. That was two days ago? Okay. Am, I not, am I not understanding the format of this? The 13th? Is it every 13th? Wednesday? Oh, I thought it was every Wednesday following the event, which that, that's what I don't I'm know. not sure about. Okay, well, the next one I believe is going to be the 13th, so that's where you can check out the action. Cool. Uh, and you have a chance to win uh, win some money, which is, which is awesome. Okay. But uh, ultimate takeaways from that uh, that series we just saw, Joe. Uh, London was great in hard points. You know, Weskin really got back into his form that we saw all year long for Optic Gaming. 
you, you had the moments it, like we've kept talking about. Uh, they have to fix some stuff at Hardpoint. I mean, they still have a shot to get out of this group. Like, they, I mean, again, I, they took a solid team in London all the way to a game five, round 10. You know, you're going to play Paris tomorrow. You have to be feeling pretty good, but that it's a tough one to swallow. It really is because I know there's just some little mistakes that they probably feel like they should at least had a better shot to win that. Well, it came down to sort of the one hard point in the map four. Like, is all of the focus for you? If you're talking about them sitting out with the coach, them sitting out with each other, if, you know, if they're at a point they're even doing that, is it really just talking through the hard points? Is that where all the fixes need to come? Well, I'm, I mean, I'm sure they could probably make some adjustments on their defense on Piccadilly because uh, you saw it was just a little bit too easy for London to get inside Bookstore. bookstore. Well, uh, yeah, usually the mid push seems so hard, or you at least have it's to like pretty difficult. You have yeah. to win a gunfight to get to dodge the nades, right? Like typically, that's like a death sentence. It's just something you do because it's a 50 50 on offense on Piccadilly, and that's better than most of the other things that you can do on that map. So, yeah, I, I think just some adjustments there. It was still a solid series. I think game one, you probably just chalk up to Kenny having a bad map one. Uh, again, I think you got some the maps that you probably wanted in a series. They just weren't able to close it out. Yeah. Well, we have one more series, then we'll have our game field marquee matchup, Joe, which to end the night, I think is one we're really excited for. You and I didn't get to talk about it because that's why I think you were getting your audio figured out. Uh, okay. It's going to be Mutineers versus Rocker. I want to know your thoughts on that match to close out the night. Yeah. So, I mean, if you look back at what, what home series was it that, what Dallas, Dallas home series Dallas, where, right. yeah, Dallas home series that the Florida Mutineers were able to take uh, over, over Minnesota, what, like 3 0, pretty comfortably. Thought it was a chance for Minnesota to, to win a home series. They weren't able to do it. But we know Minnesota is a team that learns from their previous matchups. I've talked about it multiple times. I didn't like the way they vetoed those maps uh, and the map set that they got. So maybe they make some adjustments. Or maybe it was just an off series, right? Plain and simple. Maybe they feel they didn't play that well. And you see similar maps. I mean, just plain and simple. I just think they were very confident going in, up against Florida. A lot of people had them as a favorite, but Florida shocked the world. And for Minnesota, like, you know, Florida's gotten their win. The other, like, three top teams have gotten their win. Rocker's, like, the one top team that hasn't got their win. And it's like, if you think of it's going to come, since FaZe has been a team they've matched up well against, maybe this is the event they have to do it. Because if you think to, like, one of their next home series, uh, well, I can't remember their exact schedule, but, like, at least for the Minnesota home series event, Joe, I remember when I looked at it. Like, a lot of tough I think ones, that's the one yeah. that has, that has FaZe. That has Huntsman, that has Mutineers, that has, uh, who am I everybody. forgetting for the top teams? Like, they say Faze, Huntsman, Chicago. Yeah, it has everybody. Oh, Dallas. Empire. I think Empire is who I forgot. Yeah, like, literally everyone at it. So, like, this is one of those ones where if you're Rocker, like, uh, it's one of your chances to win, for sure, because it's not going to get a whole lot easier. Uh, yeah, it's, just, uh, it's tough to win, man. Like, we, we talk about how hard it is to win. Uh, so that's why we give our props to the teams that have won. And Dallas, who's already won two home series this year. It's not easy to do. Uh, there's just so many good teams nowadays. And especially you look at those Sundays where it's single and limb. You have a bad map. That could be your day. It's just that could be the weekend. Yeah, and I thought, like, once we got to a point where we've had, what, four different winners, um, that we're getting to a point where we've probably seen all the teams that are to win, right? Like, you know your contenders, you know who's got a good chance to win, but now with, like, the, I don't know, let's say London's improvement or or New, New York's York. improvement, yeah. uh, I don't know if that's the case. And it's, like, it's just even more competition, even more difficult for Rocker to maybe get that win. I just wonder if we're going to look back at the end of the year and say they were the best team to not win, which, which is a thing in, I mean, when you talk about individual athletes or individual teams in certain sports, like, there, it feels like there's always that one team that's close that maybe should have won. And just yeah, it's like, like the playoffs in like sports where like you talk about the team who comes from a tougher conference and they lose in like the Western Conference Final, the yeah. Eastern Conference Final. If they would have won, they probably would have won the championship. And that could be something like that. Yeah, it's just they've been close. But uh, will they have another chance <laughs> to uh, to get to a final? Maybe this will be the, the event they can do it. But uh, did you I guess, I guess back to kind of the last series we did. I know, I know for London, we've been kind of excited just based on their recent performance as we take a look uh, at the overall bracket. But what what are your just first kind of thoughts with Chino? I know it's one series, but do you still really feel this is a team that needs to make a trade? I mean, oh man, that is that is a heavy question. I think they do. Uh, I, I didn't think it was a terrible series from Chino though. And I, yeah. I mean, but yeah, I think... I don't know. I don't. I just. I think it comes down to the roles, and can we get everybody a little bit more comfortable? It's one series too. 
It's one series. Maybe uh, yeah. maybe they'll maybe they'll improve massively over the course of that. But I believe uh, coming up on the other side of this break, I think we're gonna have an interview with Waskin, who we just saw hit snipe after snipe after snipe, and go toe to toe with Dashy to get that map five win. But guys, send it to a quick break. Waskin up next.